Okay. We're back. We're going to start on day six. Um, so the riots have started. Um, there's terrible stuff going on in the street, and Jill is spending the night at the Valhalla Bar, along with Dana, who I guess lives there. And there is apparently a very impressive um, security system in place that I guess uh, Dana installed when she opened the bar. I don't know if that's just because of who Dana is or because of, you know, something having to do with the BTC, which I don't think is the case. All right, let's carry on. Oh, it's not showing the apartment because we're not at the apartment. So we're going to go ahead and save at the beginning of day six. It says break, but I'm um, pretty sure this is the beginning of day six. <coughs> hmm, it's now safe to keep playing. Rise and shine. Good morning. It's 11 a.m. though. That's morning for me on the weekends and any other day. How's everything outside? Still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them at least. How so? Zaibatsu Corps president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and have subdued most of the opposition. There have also been reports of white knights just freezing, like they were petrified somehow. You make, you make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything in place. Well, I'm just glad no bullets are flying in and out of the whole building. Sure, there's still some bad apples out and it's not really safe yet, but it was worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching any white knight they spot. So not only are the white knights a problem, regular folks are on the edge too. I wonder if Say is okay. Should we be worried about Gil? That kid knows how to take care of himself. I'm sure that whatever it is he's doing, he's safe. Dare I say even safer wherever he is than here. Sure hope so. Are we going to work today? Nah, things are too nasty right now. Let's take the Sunday off. Oh, alright. Say, so, do you want me to help you get your to your apartment? Actually, yeah, that'd, I'd appreciate that. Okay, then, let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. Sounds good. Ah, our first codex sequence of the game. How oh, very Metal Gear. One second. I believe this is also the first time we've seen Jill um, in game, not just on menu screens or whatnot. Although she is often described with twin tails, you don't see him here. And here we are. Home sweet home. Thanks a lot. Hey boss, wanna come hang out for a bit? Hmm? Yeah, grab a beer and chill for a bit, mostly to thank you for helping me. Well, I don't have much to do anyway, so yeah, sure. I did tell you you should invite me to your apartment sometime, didn't I? Oh yeah, you did. What worries me a bit is that the beer always leads to something else. To more beer. I was going to say to one of us going through the Spanish announcers table. But I think we're safe here. Come on in then. Yeah, excuse me. Want one? Sorry, I don't smoke. Don't mind me though. Smoke if you want. Thanks. Say, how is the chilly weather treating you? It gets cold from time to time, but nothing like the Kotatsu and the heater can f can't fix. Oh, right, boss. You're not very good with the cold, are you? You know it. You didn't bring your jacket here, either. Yeah, I left it at home when I was going to the bar yesterday. It wasn't that cold, and I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Would you like a sweater or something? Oh, don't mind me. I insist. I have this hoodie from a long time ago, and it was too big for me. Why buy it then? It was dirt cheap. Right. 
Wait, where did you get this one? Don't know, some flea market ages ago? Why? Nothing. It just looks like one I had many years ago. What happened to it? Too much use, it just ripped. I see. You can keep it if you want, I never use it anyway. Um, we'll see. Come to think of it, how old are you, boss? I'm eternally 17. Fair enough. 17 plus how much? 17 plus I'd have to cut your tongue if you knew. Alright. Let me go change into something more comfortable. Take your time. Wow. Say, Jill, there's a blue-eyed mass of black fur glaring into my general direction. Hmm? Oh, that's just four. He's just wary of new visitors. Cats will be cats, I guess. He'll warm up quickly, though. Just give him time. He's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat. They usually have green. <coughs> yeah, weird, huh? At first I thought they were like that because he was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? Back at home we had a bear. Ah, oh, I see. What? Good old Bosco. He kept intruders away better than any dog. Right. Hmm, this picture isn't something you see every day. What? Uh, me taking such a sappy pic? No, a framed picture on printed paper. It's so vintage. Who are these? That's, um... The one on the right is Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. The one on the left is Gabriella, her sister. Hmm, is this a recent pic, or...? Actually, that one's from three, four years ago. You look exactly the same. I'm only 27. What did you expect? That's why they say kids are the ones that get old. I thought it was recent. I thought it was recent because you don't usually see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. Let alone a printed and framed one. Did you two break up on good terms? Then you even hesitated a bit when calling her your ex. Let's just say that everything ended with both of us saying mean things. And me storming out of their, her house, breaking a couple things on my way out. We never broke up formally, and I guess I still have feelings for her. I just went away. Haven't said a word since. Really? Really? It's hard to picture you doing such a thing, and you look so happy in the pic. Why have the pic out here like this, then? I just couldn't get off my mind or something that almost... I just couldn't get my mind off of something Alma said to me. About missing having the warmth of someone else pressed against your side. Using them as a pillow, mixing your perfume with theirs. Putting your head in their chest, listening to their breathing as they pet your head. Dozing off knowing they're there, watching you, protecting you. I don't know. I felt nostalgic, then miserable. I'll just put this away. I've been meaning to apologize, but I feel like it's too late now. Whenever I go out, there's this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her on the street. I just don't know if I could face her again, let alone talk to her. It'd be a mess. It's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. And what's this on the table? Looks like an envelope. It's nothing, nothing. Now please, give that to me. Lope. All right. I saw nothing. Don't worry. Anyway, anyway, let's grab some beers. Guide me. Cool. Jill has a balcony. Damn, you have a lot of beer. Well, the BTC gives me discounts and a point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. But that, the beer, is actually the cheapest drink I can get. Is there any difference between the drinks at the bar and these? Uh, the drinks at the bar are more addictive, flavorful, and also stronger than the ones they sell in stores. And besides, the one in the bar is more of a double IPA. This one's more of a Pilsner. In English, please. This one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. I don't know, it doesn't take taste like a lighter to me. Pfft. 
Is this the one made with that, um, what was the name of the base liquid you used at the bar again again? Neutrogenic di dichometrical lidogenol, or NDL. It was a supplement or something, right? It was an experimental fluid they created to replace water when the Maiden Kiss polluted water supplies. The effects of pollution turned out to be temporary, so NDL never went into mass production. But the BTC still commissioned it for use in bars. And, and is this one made with it? Let's see, yep, here it is, near the end, NDL and cornstarch. Cornstarch. It serves as a stabilizer, if I remember correctly. They need it for packaged drinks. I see, and I just realized something. What? You're a nerd, Jill. Guilty as charged. I saw that bottle of rum somewhere around. You want some of it? Will you have some too? Not really, no. Then leave it like that. I'm not letting you drink beer alone. That's not how drinking with friends works. Do you consider me a friend then, boss? Why wouldn't I? Dunno. What with being my boss and all? I was never too sure. Well, in case you had any doubts, yes, I consider you one of my best friends. Besides, you and Gil are always so diligent and responsible that I'm a boss in name only anyway. That's good to know. On a side note, it surprises me that you kept that poster of me in the room. <clears throat> and even more that you hung it in plain sight. When I gave it to you, it was more or less a joke, you know? Does it make you, un does it make you uncomfortable? If it does make you uncomfortable, if it doesn't make you uncomfortable, why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face. I'm still wondering why you did it, though. Aside from filling an empty spot on the wall, I don't really know. I thought it was funny, too. I guess it's like if someone gave you, to know, a dildo-shaped trophy or something and you had it there as a conversation starter. Although no one comes here anyway, so it's kind of pointless. What? No steamy nights of passion? Not since a year ago, I think, and I'd rather not talk about what happened then. Did someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. No, nothing of the sort. A different kind of mess. Uncomfortable mess. Not a not being able to have sex for reasons mess. Glad to know you have my back, though. That's what friends are for. Wait, you talk about the, po the poster and compare it to having a dildo-shaped trophy. Did you just call me dildo face? That's what friends are for. Hey Jill, where did you get that black four ball? Well, as with any black cat or house cat in general, he's actually a stray. I found him in alleys near the building, not long after I moved here, I think. Ah, I see. It was quite the sight he was quite the sight though. He was cornered by all these dogs, but they were keeping their distance. He was holding his ground, hissing and scratching as much as he could. There was a fried chicken bucket nearby that had some rain water in it, so I threw it through the water of the dogs. They ran and I figured the cat's mom would be nearby, so I left. Then I noticed people looking in my direction as I walked. Turns out the little shit started following me. So you brought it home? At first I wanted to see if it could find if I could find him a new home, but Having him welcome me whenever I came back was just too much for my heart, so he ended up staying. It was destiny, girl. Trying desperately not to make uh, Dana's voice David Lynch from Twin Peaks. Coop, we got it. Yeah, trying not to. All right. 
When he came, he was so cute though. Not like that fat mess that's sleeping on the table. Hey, you're not a spring chicken yourself, you know. Oh. -ho. Shit, I actually did that in front of someone else. Oh ho ho. Oh, I see, so Jill talks as if she were four. That's good to know. I didn't. Re I don't remember that from last time. I'd have to go back and check the footage, but maybe I need to drink more, and we'll see more of that. That's awesome. Let's drink. Anyway, don't any me. Anyway, me. You normally speak for your cat like that. Maybe. I wonder if Gil's alright. You worried about him? You make it sound like I'm some emotionless robot. One second, I'm just gonna tell someone about how the drunk mechanic of letting out too much information works in this game. Stand by.
Okay, back. All right. Uh, you make it sound like I'm some emotionless robot, which is exactly the way I'm speaking when I read her lines. You can be hard to read. I wouldn't worry about Gil so much, though. There's three things I know for certain about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. And third, he absolutely hates bell pepper. Why would anyone hate bell pepper? He does? I've seen him even reject food that has been in contact with it. Man, man, what a baby, unless he's allergic or something. He's not. Man, what a baby. How did you meet such a guy? He showed up in the door of the bar. He what? Well, it was shortly after the whole incident with Robert and the levitation project. Right, levitation potion. It was a slow day and he just showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but he said he didn't have any money on him. I I couldn't leave him al I couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave the drinks for free. And after a couple he broke down crying. He huh? I don't know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. He wanted a second chance or whatever, and I told him he could wash himself if he could wash himself, I'd find him a job. And I'll be damned, he looked totally different the next day. Damn. I tried and failed to find out anything about him. So I decided to take him at face value. I judge him for what he did as an employee. And aside from the occasional sudden escapade, he's been a loyal as loyal gets. I return the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time, sometimes literally. What surprises me is that you took him in so easily. I can take care of myself, and I always kept an eye on him. Besides, after the whole Robert thing, I couldn't e ignore someone that desperate so easily. I see. You've made the more bar. You've made the bar more lively yourself, you know. How so? Well, the regulars you've earned, of course. Like that blonde titty hacker. I can't remember her name. Alma? I was gonna say Armitage. Well, she's hot. I'll give her that much. She's also a nice person. She's also a nice person in the general, but damn, she's hot. Are you alright, Jill? Yeah, why? It's weird to see you say oh, so openly that someone's hot. Oh, Jill's getting shit-faced. Nice. What? Even you can she has her a hot body boss. You'll find no objections here. I mean, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about taking her to a room and. Okay, Jill is way more open when she's. Jill, you sure you aren't drunk? Oh, I am certain Jill is drunk. I am making her that way. I am. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm not. I mean, I am. But those are thoughts I leave to myself. I don't think I could handle her in a relationship. She has weird standards. That and she's as straight as straight gets. Still a lovely person, though, that she became a regular is a blessing. 
any regular is a blessing when you get down to it. There's also that sex worker robot girl. <laughs> Jill takes a couple nervous sips. Ah, uh, Dorothy. She intrigues me though. I've seen lots of sex workers over the years and she seems pretty giddy. It's not that she likes her job, but rather that she takes it to it with such childish excitement. I've kind of noticed that too, but then again, Lulam can be weird. You think? Lulam operate in some really foreign logic. I mean, they don't really share our fear of mortality. Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up in the collective source. They lose an arm, they can reattach it, or replace it. Depending on the circumstances, they may not even feel pain at all. It's not like they haven't attained human-like emotions, like fear or love, but they are different. Like a different culture, if you must. Hmm, I didn't see it in that way. Aside from that, Dorothy is a DFC 72. It's a social interactions model or something. Will them get positive reinforcement straight from their bodies if they're fulfilling their main purpose, so. <clears throat> I'm, get it. I'm guessing she gets a built in push whenever she's in a meaningful or challenging social interaction. Interesting. The name Lilum is a bit weird, though. Is it? You expect them to be called bots or dolls, or but Lilum just doesn't convey the image of automatons. Just the tip. Bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. Bot is akin to calling them retarded, and doll is like calling them fake. Thanks for the advice. That aside, do you know why they're called Lilum? As far as I know, because they all come from a bigger AI called Lilith. No, oh, man. And Lilum and Lilith's offspring. And Lilum are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folklore. Ooh, cool. Hey, speaking of names, why don't you like being called by your full name? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't act stupid. Back when you first transferred, I called you Julianne, and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. See, like that. It's no big secret, but it's one of those things that feels silly when you say it out loud. Try me. Well, did you ever watch Model Warrior Julianne? Not all of it, but my little sister is a big fan of the reruns. Back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything from the dolls to the costumes to the lunchboxes. It didn't help that was one of those shows that got literally strapped literally everywhere. I saw a couple of episodes once. I saw a couple of episodes once. They were really nice. It was beyond nice. The show's about a model who can transform into an armored-clad magic knight. She fights demons born from greed and vanity. How the show presented Jules hating her job because it invited enemies. and yet still found solace in trying to be a role model. Hell, the main character wasn't a kid. Julianne was an adult that became younger when transformed. I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kids show. Even by today's standards. Just the fact that our enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards of body image. Challenging as fuck. Whoa, you got excited there. And that is the problem, back when I was obsessed with Jules. I sang the songs, dressed like her, I could even recite full chapters. Something tells me you still can. That's beside the point. It was nice while, it was, while I was in elementary school, but when I went to middle school. And what a surprise, tweens are jackasses. They went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I don't hold it against Jules, I always hold my grudge against those fuck jobs. Sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age. 
I'm worried about jerk asses singing the theme tune of the show mocking me. Anyway, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctively react negatively. Pavlov would be proud of me. I never talk about it because I find the whole thing too silly in re retrospect. And yet, it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it, though. It's actually kind of reasonable. I sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you, boss? When I was a toddler, I was the kind to always fight with the kids bigger than me. Then puberty happened and I became Merriam-Webster division of Shallow jer Jerkwad. Around the time I turned 16, I realized what an idiot I was and went on to become who I am today. And the less I talk about those years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. Say boss, how do you like them, men? 2D. 2D? Yes, I don't mind anything as long as that thing is cute or 2D. How about you? Um, back in high school, I liked them funny. In college, I liked them successful. After a while, I just wanted them stable, and now... And now? I... I don't know. I just stopped caring about them being funny. My high school boyfriend started conflating cheering me up with mocking me when I'm down. I also stopped caring about them being successful. I realized half the time they had no qualms about cheating with me or on me. And I stopped caring about them being stable. I realized they were the kind of person I was trying not to become not become stable. There was this guy who became so obsessed with holding a stable job that he hated. He started being physically ill. Not only that, the last time I managed to get some, I ended up throwing the guy out. He took incredible offense with how I smoked on the bed after sex. The bed could catch fire, you know. Not you too. I kind of envy Alma for that. At least she dumps a guy when she dumps a guy it's for less petty reasons. Sorry. Are you okay? I'm fine. It's just it's all boils down to the fact that I can't get my mind off Lenore lately. She was she was all of what I just said. She made me laugh, she had a good position, and was stable. She was also smart, caring, and why can't I get my mind off the whole thing? It's maddening. Maybe I should go and apologize? Maybe I should. Maybe that will make me rest easier at night. Maybe get my mind off things for a while. I don't even care about going back to her, but... but ugh. Hey Jill, have you tried thinking about clothes for four? Clothes for... <laughs> Listen, I know how you must feel. You can't let all of that cloud your senses. Next time you feel overwhelmed by those thoughts, try distracting yourself. Like with, say, thinking what kind of clothes you can put on four. Yeah. You know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. What kind of people do you have in it? Keep in mind that you're included in the circle too, and any insults you hurl will apply right back to you. Anyway, I have this friend I've known for a long time, a red-headed, glasses-wearing gun nut called Iris. The one you called for the helmet thing? That one. She's managing a BTC bar in Panama right now, if I remember correctly. She's managing a bar too. I got the idea from her, actually. Oh. It's called... N1 RV and uh oh Nirvana that's the sequel isn't it I thought it was supposed to be in the Caribbean maybe in Panama okay and if you thought this city was dangerous you should see the people she has to deal with there piracy ain't nothing to fuck with 
and means it's an annex to another business. What else does she do there? I think the bar was originally her hotel's bar. She moved the bar to its own building elsewhere and opened the NRV and B in the hotel instead. Weird decision. I believe she said she wanted a place away from the noisy rich tourists that go to the hotel. So that bar is her woman cave. Woman cave. That aside, let's see, friends, friends. I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. Oh, there's also my old partner from when I was with the Neo San Francisco police force. Good old Lexi. Should give her a call sometime. Wait, you were in the what? I've done lots of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler, an MMA fighter, chimney cleaner, lumberjack, pet shop attendant, corporate mascot. Corporate what? I still, might, I still see my face on some websites from time to time. Anyways, aside from you, Gil, my sis, Iris, and Lexi, um, hmm. I guess there's a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way, mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. What about you? I guess I have acquaintances here and there. Back at home and in college, I went out a lot. But it felt more like going out was the pleasure rather than the people involved. Aside from you and Gil, my closest friend since moving here is Alma. Oh, and Dorothy. I mean, sure, there's always four, but that cat's a hermit that refuses to go out. And, you know, he's a cat. Hey, a cat's fine too, you know? Boss. Hey, boss. Hmm? How did you lose your V-card? <laughs> okay, we're going there. Nice. V, huh? You know, your V-card, your first time, your deflowering. Oh, that. Well, I'm legally bound to not disclose that information. Does that mean you lost it? Can't disclose that information. Come on, just give me a hint or... Jill, bad things will happen for everyone if that info is revealed in any way. Alright, alright, sheesh. I can only say this, the whole thing is related to my mechanical arm. Great, now you're just teasing me. Any reason you want to know that? Well, everyone's first time is always a mess, but I've always known if it was a messy, as messy a, a time as mine. What happened? Well, I got all lovey-dovey with my first boyfriend, and when we both got naked, I... When I saw his pfft, when I saw his dick, I just started, I started laughing. What, got nervous? Nervous? No, I just find dicks funny. You, uh, they're funny. They're pfft. They have a sack attached to them, and they grow, and they're just, they're just stupid meat rods. Okay. So, how did your boyfriend react? He went flaccid from the laughter, and I just shrunk and went limp. It just shrunk and went limp. I had to work it out, too, for a bit so I could control my laughter, but it's so hard. They're just so stupid. on. <laughs> Stupid meat rods. Chill? Zzz. Huh. Well, let's see how to move her back inside before she catches a cold. Well then, that was crazy. We got a view of the city. Some snow falling. Jill's 12 cans of beer drunk. I've never drinking that much beer in my life, but we'll see. Chapter 2 Amaraga. Amarga. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream here. That was a wonderful drunken uh, revelation by. Uh, Jill to Dana, and um, I'm really good. I'm, I'm really glad I'm playing New Game Plus because I'm seeing stuff I don't 
uh, remember seeing in the original game. So, all right, we're gonna stop it here and then pick it up later. Awesome. Thanks for watching, um, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.